Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, and part of a remarkable campaign that would see an end to a disease that was ravaging the youth of 1950s America. During the first half of the 20th century, polio epidemics swept through America, affecting thousands of lives with a painful illness that could paralyze and disable. Whilst the virus could affect all ages, it was particularly prevalent among children. My name is Stephen Maudsley. I'm a historian at the University of Cambridge, and I'm interested in how teenagers harnessed youth culture during the 1950s in order to increase uptake of vaccination amongst their peers, and how my research speaks to public health challenges today. The National Crusade to Conquer the Disease was led by a health charity, the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, which was established in 1938 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt and his law partner, Basil O'Connor. O'Connor was a savvy leader who utilized PR specialists to cultivate celebrity endorsement for a hugely successful fundraising strategy that encouraged the general public to donate small amounts to the charity. The campaign was named the March of Dimes, and it raised millions of dollars. The foundation waged war on polio by investing in medical treatment, health education, and research. By April 1955, the foundation's sponsorship of research culminated in the licensing of a vaccine developed by Dr. Jonas Salk, which was declared safe and effective following a massive field trial. Floyd, the vaccine could be considered 80 to 90 percent effective against paralytic poliomyelitis. The crippler had been conquered. While most children were vaccinated in the following years, the uptake amongst teens was low. Many possible factors were identified. Cost, apathy, and ignorance became serious setbacks to the eradication effort. Foundation officials realized that special strategies and knowledge of teen culture could help them reach a younger demographic. Under the slogan, Teens Against Polio, the foundation mobilized and trained a group of teenagers to become fundraisers, health educators, and grassroots activists. With foundation support, teens experimented with strategies to inspire their peers to seek protection against polio. Up in the morning and out to school. This was the age of the rock and roll rebel. Music, television, dancing, and movies were huge influences on youth culture, along with growing consumerism and leisure time. Rock and roll music sales boomed as teens purchased the latest records from Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, or Little Richard. Exploiting teen culture, Teens Against Polio, otherwise known as TAP, and allied youth groups organized exclusive dances with live bands. One could enter for free by showing proof of vaccination with an immunization card. Sock hops, where teens shed their shoes to take to the dance floor, were dubbed Salk hops in recognition of Dr. Jonas Salk. Some TAP members advocated dating restrictions for unvaccinated men, promoted as the no shots, no dates tactic. Young women were asked to deny the dating requests of would-be suitors until they were vaccinated. Although teen health activists could not solve all the challenges facing vaccination, their strategies had a remarkable effect. Through their enthusiastic approach and innovative ideas, teens broadened the scope of the Foundation's vaccine campaign by addressing fears, access restrictions, and misinformation about polio. As teen vaccination increased, fewer cases of polio emerged. By 1960, the annual incidence of polio had decreased by nearly 90% since 1950, and the introduction of the oral polio vaccine helped to eradicate polio in America altogether. Teens Against Polio shows the importance of identifying populations that are not participating in vaccination programs and empowering them to influence the delivery of public health initiatives to best meet the needs of the community.